Hi guys, Zomboid here, and uh, I've been asked to do a little guide for um, sort of how to survive in PvP. Now, some of the stuff I know wouldn't really be uh, applicable for this private server, but there is still some stuff that you might want to consider and would actually be quite helpful. Um, now, if we're just going to talk about gear that you should probably have, Parachutes, so important. Um, you should really be carrying them all the, around with you all the time, unless you're in the ocean. Um, they're not the heaviest thing, but with you having quite a few of them, they do weigh you down. However, on this server, oh, oops. Oh, I don't know why I can't make that. I can't make dodo kibble because I don't have the carrots. Um. With the server where you're having really good weight, you shouldn't really need to worry about weight, so that shouldn't really be an issue. Um, but, yeah, parachutes, definitely a big. Now, before Scorched Earth Ragnarok came out, there wasn't the whip. The whip is out now. Um, you either want bowlers or a whip, or both. Ideally, probably both. Now, what some people may not be aware of is that the whip can dismount a rider off their tame uh, temporarily. I think it might just be to flyers, I'm not too sure. But essentially what can happen is that if you get picked up by someone, you can basically whip them off their bird. Now this doesn't apply to griffins. Griffins can't be whipped off. I'm pretty sure wyverns can. So if you get picked up by a wyvern and you have a whip on you, then you can whip up. Another thing for gear is grappling hooks. Now, if someone bowlers you, uh, and you think, oh great, now I've got to stand still and die, that isn't the case. Um, not at all. Literally, the only thing that you need to do is have a few grappling hooks and like grapple onto a few trees, keep moving until the your uh, timer goes, because even though you won't be able to run the spot, it doesn't mean that you can't move. You can also use, still use guns and your tools to defend yourself, but um, if you get bowlered or your tame gets bowlered, uh, if your tame gets bowlered, you can still take it off. But um, in order of tames and sort of talking about tames, you want as many flyers as possible, as many flyers as possible, because if you're getting raided, the a good way to you know, defend your base is by picking people and dropping them, like taking them either to your turrets or you like dropping them from a great height. Now if you drop them from a great height then um, they may have a parachute and it wouldn't matter. If you take them to your turrets they may try and whip you off anyway, but if you have a lot of flyers, so that in the, basically in the circumstances that if you accidentally have a bird killed then you've say got like 10 more or something. You know. Um, now, in saying that, birds that I would recommend is either uh, petras, griffins, wyverns, maybe even a tapajara. And the reason why I would not include an RG is because they're slow. They're slow. And there's so much more stuff that's more tankier than they are, and can do more damage, has more ability than there is in the game. Like, the RNG isn't really in the great place for PvP. Um, like, with some good armor, an RNG won't even do that much damage. It's just, it, you ask yourself the question, what is the point? Now, obviously, I'm showing you a little bit of my base, but, uh, oh, for God's sake. Um, uh, that doesn't really matter too much to me, because um, I've built my defences up. Now, for defences, you can either have explants or turrets. Now, I have explant seeds, but I haven't planted them yet, but I will by the time um, official comes on. Sorry, I say official, the PvP comes on. Um, but, yeah, you, you want good defence. A good defence. Lots of turrets or, you know, ammo, eggs, plants, whatever. Is better than you doing a little bit of defence and then going raiding someone. 
Because I know what someone says says that oh a good offensive is a good defense. Well, the thing is, is that even though, and it isn't like it obviously unofficial. There's no raid protection, but even though, you know, you may have raided someone and they won't be able to attack. It doesn't mean that someone else can't. And the big thing about the official is the uh, art transfer, and that so someone not even in your server could come and, you know, raid you because they found your base or something. Right. This is the point. Most people don't realise, like, how vulnerable they are on official, and then they don't really put any in time into their defences. And then they end up getting, you know, wiped and raided, and it's just like, really? I've put all my time into this just to get wiped like this, no. You want a good defence. Turrets, eggs, plants, multiple ones. Now, there's videos on YouTube for, like, turret towers and stuff. Um, it really depends on what point you are at. Um, but just having turrets on all four sides of your base, or how many sides you have, maybe you're in a cave or something. Um, if you are in a cave, just bear in mind that there's six times cave damage, so whatever damage will be done to your structure, we'll say one grenade is going to be times by six in a cave, and so on for the other, you know, tools and explosives. Um, now, with coming with this, you obviously need to pick a good base location. I preferably, ideally, hidden. But nothing stays hidden forever, so you're going to want to be in a fortifiable position. Now, if, if I was just to pull up the map and say, oh, well, yeah, coordinates here, 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 and here, and here, where a good base is, um, or good base defense where you can possibly build, it wouldn't really actually be that helpful because you would only have the coordinates. It wouldn't be actually me going to show you where they are. Now, to say, yeah, I can show you where they are, but because this is kind of a urgent video, I don't really have time to go do that. And other people have already done that on YouTube. So if you want to check out, like, base locations, then you can. Um, just search uh, Ragnarok base locations. Um, and see as simple as that. Now... <sighs> There is 33 minutes from when you go offline to when no longer damage can be done to your tames and structures and your like, stuff. But, like, even if they just say they destroy a chest, they can't take anything out of that, like, item cash bag. Um, if it's already hit that 33 minutes, so the, it, basically the stuff will despawn. One thing I need to strongly suggest is that like, your vaults, have them locked. Your normal standard chest things, like chemistry bench and the smithy, have them unlocked. Like, I'm going to unlock these now so I don't forget. And the reason being is that if someone does break into your base... Now, I've said only take what you want. Now, there's no way of me really saying that, you know... Da, 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 da. But the best way that you can do to make sure that at least some stuff gets left behind is making sure that they don't have to blow into everything. Now, because I've got vaults here, if someone actually got into my base and wanted to blow these vaults up, then they would probably blow the Fab B and the Smithy and the Chemistry Bench at the same time. You know, over here they probably blow the fridges, but it's cramped in here, but it's what I'm working with. However, if you have, like, say, some storage inside where it's just some plain chests, it's probably best to have them unlocked because then they would only, you know, take out so much. If someone was despawning all your stuff, then that's going to be a bit, you know, a bit shitty, really. Because at the end of the day, the only people that you're going to fight against and are official is the people in this server. Maybe you'll be completely friendly and no one attack you. The likelihood of that is not very high, unfortunately. Um, so, essentially, yeah, you want to build a base with a lot of good defense. You want to have a lot of tames to help you. Like even, even like a bad Bronto, on like aggressive. When so, say if they're trying to raid you with a Stego. Bad Bronto on aggressive, you know, like level 30 or something, it's still going to be better than nothing. Um, 
And there's also going to be sort of a thing about knowing when to, um, like, have your dinos on passive or whistle neutral. Because the reason why you tend to have your tames on passive is that they don't go chasing after, like, the people that are raiding you, because otherwise it's easier to bait them out and kill them individually, rather than, you know, when they get into your base they're all clumped together. Now that doesn't mean when someone raids into your base you leave your tames in the open fire or whatever they want to shoot at, but there will possibly be moments in when they're trying to raid you whether they're vulnerable. And at the minute, uh, like you have like the option to, I don't think it will actually be removed. I don't, I don't think there's a possible way to remove it. But you, um, unless the arc devs actually do it themselves, but there is a possible thing to turn off group whistles. For example, say if you had some stuff outside, you could have them left on for like group whistling. But the stuff inside, like say like your egg stuff, if you got any uh, like kibble farm or dinos. Um, then you could possibly tell them to ignore group whistles so that if you're like trying to whistle uh, you know all of them away or move a load when you're getting raided that it doesn't affect the guys inside um, that's just a little idea um, I wouldn't be wasteful either especially with gunpowder because you use gunpowder to make turret ammo so when defending your base, it is a good thing to have, you know, guns and stuff like that, don't get me wrong. But, uh, wasting bullets is, um, you know, just wasting bullets, shooting into the sky, that sort of stuff, isn't really going to be the best idea for you, because that could have been ammo into some turrets. Um, now you're going to need a way to, like, refill your turrets. Uh, a good way to refill your turrets is by using grappling hook. Now I already mentioned grappling hook for moving around. Um, but, yeah. You essentially, just to defend your base, you want to have um, as much possible stuff to your side as possible. You want to build your base good, have a lot of decent, even if you get yourself a hundred X plants, it's gonna take them longer to sort out a hundred X plants than it is, say, 20. Um, another good thing would be to get a perimeter around your base with the, um, like, behemoth gates. I'll go outside and I'll show you what I mean, and I'll explain why as well. But we need to chuck some more thatch in this, because I'm making lots of kibble. Just to have it handy, really. These dodos lay so many eggs, but essentially half the time I don't even pick them up because I've got too many already. I might as well make some kibble out of it. Alright, so I'll quickly um, I'll show you what I mean. It's like I call like inside here the compound because um, there's behemoth gates all the way around. We've got wyverns on the edge and. There you go, there's our turrets, and that's where our gunpowder goes. Um, hello, direwolf. And you see, it goes all the way around. And we've got turrets pointing in every single direction. Um, as I said, I don't have eggs plants out at the minute, but it doesn't mean that I won't, you know, place them out. It's just, they need fertilizer to stay growing, so I might as well grow them at the last minute. Now, if you're wondering where, to get X plants, a good place to get some X plants is down there. Literally, I found so many X plant seeds down there. You can also get them like in random spots in the jungle. Um, uh, so that is about 2020, really, around that area. Um, but down here in the swamp near the castle, there is actually a few. Um, X plant, uh, they look like, oh, they look like a big bush, really. A, um, I don't know if you've ever seen any X plant. Uh, it's not got like the hand thing where it throws it, but it's just like the base of it. It looks like a, just a big X plant. And you can go up and press triangle and it gives you X plant seeds. Because it's times six, you only really need to ever find one. If you find one, then, you know, you're, you're sorted for a while and 
they're all down there, so. But I think that's all really that I can add for now. Um, a lot of people are going to be, um, you know, uh, not as advanced as like some of the official servers are because they've been running for longer. Another thing actually to add is airlocks. Um, best way to imagine this is like this whole area is technically an airlock because we've got to blow through one layer and then get into the next one into my base if you can kind of catch my drift. Um, so essentially what you could do is like say let's just say it's a 3x3 three three base uh, then you go with like a foundation all the way around so it's then it's like a um, you know, 4x4 four four almost um, I think you'll get what I mean so uh, let me see if I can do it in thatch actually or wood or something um, do you have any thatch? Ah, oh, you do. Thank you. Oh, and some flint. I've been looking for flint. Thank you, wood. No. Uh, okay. Let's just hop on you. Yeah, and we'll go down here. And I'll rob a beaver just so I can quickly show you this thing. Right, let's just do a 2x2. Two two. Right. And uh, do, 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 do. one of them, one of them. One, two, three, four. And a few of these. And I'm probably going to need more fibre, so let's pick up some more fibre. And then, uh, yes. You get what I mean. You can understand. Right. Uh, okay, so let's put that there. And this here. Right. Right. That there. Where's my walls? No thatch wall. I swear I said thatch walls, but... Oh. Alright. Well, I'll make ten for now, because that is actually going to kind of carry us over to what we need. Oh, and I also said one, two of them as well. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. But we're almost there. Alright, so... Let's just say, for example... Okay. Let's see. Pain. And uh, so is that. Come on. Don't know why it's doing this. Alright, let's go to these ones, because I don't need them. Now I know it's out of patch, but you can just, you know, have it in mind for whether it be, um, thatch or wood, stone, metal, you know, it's basically the same concept of what I'm on about. Let's just say this is your base, alright? Now, what I'm saying is to help your base out, what you should do is this. Now, if I get somewhere I can't place a foundation, I'm going to be quite annoyed. I'm not going to lie, I'm going to be quite annoyed. I need more fibre, probably, I'm guessing. there. 
And it's not going to let me place one here, probably. Oh no, it does. Alright. So, let's get another door. And a doorway. Right, what I'm saying is, like, this area is going to be your airlock. So, as we said, the, the stuff in there is still going to be your base. But you're just going to create another layer on uh, whatever you want your base to be. So that when they come along, and they probably will, they will have to destroy through two layers. Now, what you can do is you can also go up on the ceiling. So, like, I can take these walls too high, and... Uh, am I out of thatch? Fibre. It's always fibre. Um... I'm not going to cover all the sides, because I'm being conscious for time. But, let's see. Just do this. So you would essentially have this. But it covered, so that, you know, these walls were up and the ceiling was up. And it was just like this, but, you know, bigger. So in an essential sense, what they would have is you'd have two layers on your ceiling. It doesn't have to be one high, you can make it as ever high as you possibly want it. Um, so they, you know, they come in and they land on these top foundations, or the ceilings. Right? They either land on the ceiling, or they land on the ground and they go through your door. So they're going in to raid you, and they break down your first door. Now, it being whatever strength it is, it's stone, metal, it's probably taken them some time. They realise that there's nothing in here, so they've got to break through again. Now, they go around, because they know the weakest point is either going to be a door or a window, and they find a, wi they find a door, so they've got to break it down again. Rather than it just being, imagining there's no external layer there, they just come along, blow through one door, and they're in all of your stuff. I hope this, you know, answered some questions. Um, hopefully it's been good, you know, help you out a little bit. Using brews, you know, while you're trying to defend your base would be a good idea, especially like medicine brews. Um, but, uh, yeah, if you have found this helpful, then let me know in the comments below. If you think I was just rambling on for 25 minutes then let me know in the comments below but um, essentially until next time guys don't stop slaying. <laughs>